Like any dialect, a programming language is made up of a set of words with the addition of being stitched together with some basic math. But there are also some other symbols you might not recognise from your time in school. Bitwise operators allow you to manipulate data at its most basic binary level. And maybe because we're not classically taught math from this perspective, or we generally don't process data in ones and zeros but rather a more visually distinguishable form, it can be quite confusing for novice programmers to interpret or visualise what they do. Generally, you can't use something unless you understand it, but because it's not obvious what they're for, it's not difficult to never use them. This leads to a fallacy of, I've never needed it, so it's not important. But they are so important that they span across multiple different languages and platforms. So today I want to explain what are bitwise operators and why you should care. Computers today evolved from a generation of machines that emerged in Silicon Valley back in the 1970s. With a combination of heat and solder, engineers had to mold these machines together with their bare hands. Gigabytes were fantasy and kilobytes were a luxury, and in order to use what little resources they had, they had to be diligent, efficient and precise. It's this work that lays the foundation of the modern operating system. The code you write today is like building a house on a bedrock that you may never need to touch. The phrase don't reinvent the wheel is a common idiom spouted in offices and labs all over the world and it's this doctrine of reuse that makes different programming languages do a really good job at keeping most of us away from dealing with machines on this level. Remember, the purpose of the modern programming language is to bridge the gap between human understanding and these rapid flickers of light. So when you see a hello world program, that's our way of invoking thousands of these ones and zeros in a fraction of a second in a way that makes sense to us. But. At some stage, every software engineer has to delve into this arcane art. In the back pages of the guides to your favourite programming languages, these operations can get easily brushed over, only to have people confused later on, trying to wrap their mind around a line with triangle brackets while cursing the maniac that invoked this black magic on their last commit. Well, let's pull back the curtain of superstition, climb over the wall of bad examples convolution and needless confusion. Starting from now, what are bitwise operators? Let's go back to basics, because I think this is the best way to visualise it. On this circuit, every time I press the button, the current is allowed to pass through the light and back into ground, lighting up the LED. So the light is always either on or off, or 1 or 0. If you were to write what the light was at every second over a 7 second period, you could get a pattern like this. This could be interpreted as a letter L, while this could be interpreted as a letter H. Around the midpoint of the 20th century, a device called a transistor evolved from vacuum tubes. A transistor acts as an electronic switch using its three parts, the collector, an emitter and a base. Current will want to flow from the collector and exit through the emitter, but it can't unless another current is applied to the base. This allows the base to act as a kind of decision maker for whether or not the circuit can complete. When transistors are laid out on a circuit in a particular pattern, they can create logic gates. An AND gate looks like this. Notice the emitter of one transistor is connected to the collector of another. This means in order for the LED to turn on, both switches have to be on in order to let a current pass to both of their bases. Now we don't need circuit diagrams to show this, we can use numbers where 0 is off and 1 is on. Bitwise AND takes two bit sequences, 1100 and 1010. First compare the first two bits, if they're both 1 then the answer is 1. Next if we have a 1 and a 0, the answer is 0. This is the same as 0 or 1. And if they're both a 0 then the answer is 0. An OR gate means one or both of the switches have to be on in order for the LED to light up. If we have a 1 or a 1, the answer is 1. If we have a 1 or a 0, the answer is 1. If we have a 0 or 1, the answer is 1. And if we have two zeros, then the answer is, of course, 0. Exclusive OR means only one of the inputs is 1. So it's similar to OR, except that both of them have to be different. NOT is a little different because it only works on one bit pattern and what it does is it reverses all the bits in it. So if you have a 1 you get a 0 and if you have a 0 you get a 1. Then there are the shift operators. These have a physical component as well called the shift register. Programming languages have bitwise shift operators to do the same thing. If you shift the bits to the left they fall off and get replaced by zeros. You can do the same to the right as well. You also might see the circular shifts and what happens is you can shift them to the left and instead of falling off and getting replaced with zeros they come back on the other side and of course this happens to the right as well. So why use these operations in the first place? Well if you ever started playing around with an Arduino or any sort of embedded controllers you will probably find a lot of libraries using them. If you don't have much memory, understanding how to control bits gives you more control over the limited resources you have. When you start working that close to the hardware you can use bitwise operations to optimise your code. For instance you could store 8 true false values in one byte rather than 8 1 byte booleans. This lets you save memory and you can use bitwise logic to change the values. Or you can use various shifting operations to perform multiplication and division. In hashing algorithms they make it really hard to decode a hash signature. 
Well, if you get two bitstreams and you get the or of them, it's next to impossible to get what the original bitstreams were. So it becomes nearly impossible to decode your original message. Anyways, that's my intro to Bitwise Logic. I hope you liked the video. If you like it, like, share and subscribe. And good luck.